when you first start to work with the audio board, the first thing you want to do is turn up the masters all the way up. Um, people coming from a live sound environment will think that's the wrong thing to do. They'll think everything should start a little bit lower so that as you go on and you need more sound, you can then turn it up. That's for a live sound environment. This is for recorded sound. We want the levels where we want them to be all the time and then control them at the channel, not at the master. So if you see them down, just push them all the way up and you can explain why. It's recording, not live the audience will never change. If the audience can't hear it, they can turn up the volume on their TV. All right. So masters are all the way up. You then have all your sliders. The green one is for a telephone interface we don't use anymore. You'll never use it. The white ones are all your tape decks, CD players, anything that is a stereo audio input is going to be your white slider. Anything that's a microphone or a mono input is your red slider, and that's how they're logically separated. Okay. Um, in our facility, if it's red, it's a mic. There's no other mono source, or it's a line that has a mic usually on it. All the channels are labeled at the bottom to tell you what they are. There are two channels with two separate inputs. It's input number two and input number 12. Uh, input number two has a uh, news mic two out on the floor and also this control room microphone here, and they're switchable. You can't have them both on at the same time. Mic number 12 has the wired mic input number 12, and also the wireless mic system uh, that we have currently installed in the control room. You can either have one or the other. To choose one or the other, you go all the way up to the top of the channel, and there's a button that says mic two. If you push mic two, it's the secondary input. Secondary input is always the one labeled on the bottom. And these are the only two channels that have secondary inputs. Okay. So let's use, let's use this one since we'll be able to see and hear levels, or actually at least see levels. So we're going to use news, uh, we're going to use the control room mic, which is the second input on news mic two. So I'm going to turn it up. Um, the first pot at the top is your aux. Um, this is an aux send that we use for more advanced work in the studios. Uh, for TV1, they're not going to need it for anything. Um, the gray knobs behind that, these are the, gain, or the uh, pots for EQ. If you wanted to EQ a source, you turn the EQ button on. You can then adjust the low, mid, and high frequency equalization. If you don't need it, turn it off. There is also a high pass filter, which allows the higher frequencies to go through and kind of rolls off on the bass. So if you have an extra amount of bass uh, or somebody's really breathy into the microphone, you can put that on and it'll allow all the higher frequencies to go through but eliminate the lower frequencies. Okay. We then have groups. This will send the source or send that particular channel to different areas. Group one is a dedicated monitor on the stage. Uh, unless you are trained in why you need that, don't use it. Group 2 sends to quality control and our secondary recording areas. You always want to have that one selected. Groups 3 and 4 don't exist for this board. If you push them, nothing happens. And you always want to be sending your signal to program. Okay. Uh, group 1 uh, conveniently has to do with this first group 1 slider. Group 2 is the second one and program is the yellow master fader. Okay. When you get down into the channels, the yellow pan pot moves it from left to right and the trim gives you overall trim or gain beyond or below zero. So you can go up plus 12 dB of gain or minus 12 dB of gain. You can go either direction. Then you've got your slider. When you need volume, turn it up. If you need more volume and you're all the way at the top, turn up your trim. If you're down here and you have too much volume, turn it down and then it'll give you a little more range of motion. Okay. The buttons at the top, if you've got headphones plugged in, you can hit PFL and that'll give you the pre-fade level. Okay, you have to hold it. Uh, that'll allow you to sample or audition the sound from that channel before you bring it up. So if you're trying to test mics, you can't test the level per se, but you can test that yes, there's a signal there. Okay, so that's PFL if you've got headphones on. The other options don't apply to us. Um, they would be if the board was hooked up with automated control systems. So basically there's a Q light that could theoretically turn on an on-air light, which we don't have hooked up. There's also a fader button that when you bring up the fader, it cues the cue light automatically. But we don't have any equipment that interfaces with that, so you can leave that stuff alone. 
when you're getting a level, you want to be getting something averaging around zero, not too far into the red, not too uh, far uh, in the black, unless it's really, really low. So I'm going to bring this up. Easiest way to test a microphone is to scratch it. Never bang on the top of a microphone. That's bad for the diaphragm of the microphone. Scratch it, and that's going to simulate talking at a semi-decent level. So I'm scratching, I'm scratching. You can see I'm never really hitting zero. I want to be hitting zero and it kind of averaging around that area. So I'm going to turn my trim up a little bit, and that's kind of a good talking level. Peaking just a little bit in the red, but for the most part averaging right around zero. That's where you want people to be talking, and that's when you do the mic check what you want. The difference there is tone. When you're running tone through the system, tone comes in at patch paddle. You want tone to hit right at zero every time. So we make that adjustment, and now tone's at zero. Some people like to make it so that when they bring the slider all the way up, it's zero right there. Other people might like to only bring it up to the point that it goes to zero, which would be there based on where the gain is. But I try to tell people, bring it all the way up, adjust your gain to zero, so that way you know it's just all the way on or all the way off. That's where tone should be, zero at all times. Okay. You could have the slider up, and if the master is down, that would definitely not get you tone at zero, so just keep an eye on that stuff to make sure that those masters are up and tone hits zero. Then when you're mixing sources, you just pay attention to the meters, making sure that if you've got multiple people talking at the same time, and everybody's been mic checked at zero, when it all adds together, you're definitely in the red. So your mic check gives you basically your maximum amount of sound that this signal would have, and if you have multiple people talking, they'll come down just a little bit. Usually I use the gain or the trim to give you your overall level, and then you make adjustments with the slider. Some people like to have the slider all the way up and make adjustments with the trim, but overall you'll be a little bit more sensitive with the slider than the trim knob. Any questions? Uh, the CD player is a little finicky. Um, when you play the CD player, you pop the disc in, for whatever reason, when you hit play, it doesn't always play. So be on the lookout for hitting pause. Pause will usually unpause the disc and allow it to play. Okay? Then when you pause it again, even though you want to hit play, it won't play. Hit pause and it'll unpause and run again. So whoever operates audio in your classes, make sure that they practice doing that a few times as well. The other option for audio is if they bring in a laptop, an MP3 player, or something with a headphone jack, this can plug in the headphone jack, turn the volume on the device up, and then it routes in through the cassette deck. There's no other buttons you have to push on the cassette deck other than to bring up on the board the cassette feed. And that'll get audio from CD. You've got audio from mics. You've got audio from all the VTRs and other machines and whatever you want to plug into a headphone jack. If you want to talk to people on the floor, or actually before that, if you want to adjust the volume overall in the room, there's a dial for that for control room monitors. There's your volume control. There's also a second volume adjustment for the studio speakers. That's studio monitors. You want to pretty much leave these straight up and down. That's a good starting point. If you find it's too loud in the control room, just turn it down. If they complain they can't hear it in the studio, you turn it up. You can also mute those speakers. Okay, you can also send different signals to the speakers, those are what those buttons do, but for the most part, you're looking at mute. Dim will knock the sound down by 50%, like you're dimming lights, just like dimming the sound. There's also a jack for headphones. Okay, the other thing you can have is when you want to talk to the floor, there are three options for talking to the floor. One is to use this mic, bring it up, and the people on the floor will hear you. Uh, the other option at the board is the talkback microphone. The talkback mic is mounted in the board itself and it goes to a dedicated speaker out on the floor that is always on. So to activate the microphone you push the talkback or TB button in the studio monitor section right above the microphone and you talk. You don't have to lean in all the way, please don't shout into the microphone, just talking somewhere near the board is enough to be heard. That's an easy way to get in direct contact with the floor to have mic checks or if any other issues are going on. The third way the audio operator can talk to the floor is there is a separate headphone or headset with a control box with call and talk buttons, also volume. We've found that in this corner, 
the audio operator sometimes has difficulty hearing the director and the floor manager, so we got them their own headset. So three different ways to talk to the floor. Please note that this board will automatically mute any channels where it senses the mic and the speakers could be on at the same time. So as you'll notice, when we turned on our microphone here and I scratched the mic, you saw levels, but you didn't hear anything in this room. That's because this board has been programmed to say that this mic is in this room, so we don't want these speakers on when that happens. If we turn on mics out that would be normally on the floor, the speakers out on the floor will mute and we'll hear them in here. So this is a very important note that if you're running music for your show and the music is up and then the director calls, while the music's still up, the director calls, all right, get it ready to bring in mics and bring in mics. As soon as you bring the mics in, it's going to mute the speakers out on the floor. So talent will just suddenly not hear anything anymore, and that's normal. This is also why you always want to have a floor manager that pays attention and a director that cues talent. Because if they hear that audio go away, they might think, oh, it's time to start. Don't do that. Okay, so the music will fade out. As soon as they hear that stuff mute out in the studio, they know or should know that there's mics that are hot on the studio floor. So this board will automatically mute the speakers wherever it thinks or we told it where the mics will be. It will also tell you that. So when you bring it up, you hear a little click. You hear the click, okay? It's also lighting up the mute button in wherever it's muted. So right now when we brought up mic one down on the floor, it automatically muted the studio speakers. When we bring up this control room mic, see it automatically mutes the control room monitors. So if you're not hearing sound or your audio operator can't hear anything anywhere, chances are one of these might be up and muting speakers. It will always tell you at the top of each channel if a fader is open, so you can very easily look there to see what's what. That's masters, that's headphones, that's the microphone. That's the masters, that's the channels. We went through all the channel options, and that pretty much sums it up.